Hey guys, welcome back to Technique. Today, we're gonna to be installing the Spoon Rigid Collar Kit. We're gonna show you the benefits of the system and also show you the install. So this is the Spoon Rigid Collar Kit. It comes in a fairly small box. As you can see, as you open the box, it has instructions in it. No use to me. It's good for pictures, but I don't read Japanese, so I guess I could go by the pictures. And then it comes with some Anti-seize, there's a copper anti-seize that you're supposed to put on each collar before you install them. It just adds a little bit of lubrication and prevents the aluminum from galling against the steel. And as you look at the kit, they are numbered from one through six. And the numbering corresponds to which um, hole the collar goes into. It goes from one for here, two, three, four, five, and six. And these are two subframes that were removed from a different vehicle just to explain to you what the kit will be, look like when it's installed because once it's on the vehicle it's a little hard to see so what we're going to do is we're going to pre-test every single collar and the holes and collar is going to take one through six on the other side and basically just bolts right there so what the spoon rigid collar kit does is as you can see there is material on the back side that actually centers the bolt into this hole the, the actual bolt hole is a lot larger than the actual bolt used in the subframe. So what happens is when you go around the corner really hard or use really high grip tires, it can actually shift the subframe left and right as you go around the track. So to prevent that, Spoon developed a system where it actually helps center the subframe onto the chassis and prevents the subframe from moving. So this is the factory bolt from the Honda S2000. This bolt co corresponds to this hole. It's a 17 millimeter bolt. And as you can tell, when I put the bolt in, there's a lot of play in the hole, obviously because of the fact that the hole is larger than the bolt. But if you put the corresponding collar to it, which is this one, the number three, there is a lot less play. As you can tell, because of the collar, it actually centers the bolt right in the middle and there's no play at all. So one of the things you wanna do before uh, actually lowering the subframe, which we're gonna do in order to put the collars in, is you wanna support the cradle of the subframe with some type of stand. The problem most enthusiasts have noticed on their vehicles is that these bolts will easily strip because of the fact that they're just zapping the bolts loose with a impact gun. And when the cradle starts moving down, the bolts start going at an angle and actually start stripping the threads of the subframe. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna definitely support it with some type of brace. As you can see here, we're gonna use three of these braces, one on the front and one on each side before we actually remove the bolts. So we're putting all three support braces on before we start removing all three bolts or lowering all three bolts. There go. And there are six bolts in the front, six bolts in the rear. And there's one here and then one here. Two of them are actually a lot longer than the middle one. The middle one is actually fairly short. And the reason why Honda designed the two, on the two bolts to be a little bit longer is so you could actually rest the subframe on the bolt as you're changing the clutch. So we're not gonna remove the two longer ones, but we're gonna remove the shorter one in the middle, which is a 19 millimeter bolt, which is a lot shorter. As you can see by this one, it has a lot more threads in it and it probably won't get removed for another two inches. So. There, and there. So we're just gonna remove this guy. And now that all six bolts are actually removed or lowered a little bit, we can actually lower the uh, jack points down and it'll actually bring the suffering down slightly to put the collars in. There we go, that's it. So now we're actually gonna remove the bolt completely. Now that all six bolts are removed, actually the suffering's about two inches lower than what it should be. So that'll give us enough space to actually slide the rigid collar in between the subframe and the chassis. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna slide the rigid collar between the chassis and the subframe. And this one's mark number three, which is the corresponding home for this guy. And we're just gonna slide it in like, just like that. And we're gonna do it for the other two holes. While Carla drops the thing, while we're recording. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> So there are three collars on both sides and each one corresponds with the number. This, the first closest to the front of the vehicle is number one and then goes backwards. So it's one, two, and three. And it just slides into each hole correspondingly. And then we're, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna lift the suffering back up. And as we're lifting the suffering back up with the brace, we gotta make sure it actually centers into these holes. 
But we want to be very careful when we're actually raising it because it requires a lot of patience and movement, as you can see. All right, we need to move it to the right a little. So what we're gonna do now is apply a little anti-seize that was supplied with the kit onto the bolt. This prevents the bolt from stripping in the hole. So you wanna make sure it's coated slightly throughout all the threads and then put it back in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually tighten each bolt by hand with using a regular ratchet. We don't wanna use power tools on reinstalling these bolts because they're fairly easy to strip and we don't want that happening and that will require dropping the whole subframe and re-tapping each bolt hole. So now that we have all the bolts in, uh, we need to torque them. So manufacturer specs is 85 foot-pounds for the 19 millimeter bolts and 43 foot-pounds for the 17 millimeter bolts. So we've completed the front and now we're gonna start uh, doing the rear collar. So we're gonna put the braces in and get started. Now that we've braced the rear suspension, we can actually zap all six bolts again off. And then once we zap all six bolts off, we can lower the subframe through the bracing. So what Carla's gonna do now is gonna be removing six bolts on the subframe. There's two 19 millimeter bolts right here on each side, one on each side. And there's four 17 millimeter bolts two on each side, one here and one here. So now that all six bolts are off, the subframe should actually start lowering down once we remove the bracing or lower the bracing. So as we lower the bracing, the subframe starts to lower just a little bit. And we just need to lower it just enough so we can slide the collar in. So we're gonna slide the collar into this corresponding spot. This is the number four collar and then it just slides right in. So putting number five in, get in the hole. We're gonna do number six. There we go. And then we'll do the other side of number six. So now that we have all the collars in place, we can actually push the suffering back up using these bracing. And we wanna make sure when we're pushing it up, we're going very slowly and make sure the holes line up to each one. We're just tightening the bolts back down, hand tightening it again, before we torque them back down to the correct torque specs, whatever the manufacturer rating is. So now that we've finally put all the bolts back in in the rear, uh, we're gonna be torquing them down to the manufacturer settings. So for the 17 millimeter bolts, it's gonna be 43 foot pounds. And for the 19 millimeter bolts, it's gonna be 76 foot pounds. Now the installation is complete, we are able to install the collars using very, very simple hand tools. Just a 17 millimeter and 19 millimeter socket, a ratchet, and a torque wrench. And the only reason why we use a torque wrench was because we wanted to torque all the bolts back down to the manufacturer's specification. Other than that, just four tools and the collars were installed. We took roughly about 30 minutes to install the fronts and about an hour to install the rear because the rear has a lot more components to the system and to get the collar centered in the right place it took us a little bit longer. But other than that, it was fairly easy. Thanks again for watching this episode of Technique. And if you guys have any suggestions for any future installations that you might like to see, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and we will address it if we can. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot, guys.